acting as a switch to turn on and off important genes having to do with brain development, learning, and memory, and metabolism. It's very intriguing that such a simple molecule can do such specific things in a brain metabolism and function that are very consistent with found in autism. So far, there are no studies showing that PPA or E280 isn't safe for adults when used as a preservative. But Dr. McFabe's work with animals shows that gut bug metabolites like PPA could be triggering autism in susceptible children. Normal or near normal people exposed to high levels of alcohol are not behaving as their normal selves. And by analogy, I think normal or near normal children exposed to high levels of propionic acid gut bug metabolites are not themselves. By removing the propionic acid, by either getting rid of the bug that makes it, not feeding the bugs that are there, healing the gut, or in using compounds that help break it down, that, that will be the approach of treating this disease. Yeah? Oh, pop, pop. Oh. oh, no. <laughs> it's painful, to be honest. It's painful to watch it because we were so close. I really think that we were so close a decade ago to fixing this, but no one would listen. Many parents have taken up the gut bacteria theory and are using it to devise treatments. Andrew is now 19 years old. It's hard to believe that it's been that many years. I do think that it's a war in Andrew's intestinal tract. There is a colony of, um, I believe, neurotoxin-producing bacteria that established itself and set up camp and set it up good and strong and at an early age. And basically what you become colonized with as a child, those are the bacteria you die with. Keeping Andy on powerful antibiotics indefinitely wasn't an option. Long-term use would have dangerous side effects. So Ellen turned to other therapies. She has found that by giving Andy massive amounts of probiotics, supplements containing benign bacteria, his symptoms are controlled. So even if Andy's clostridia can't be eradicated, they can be beaten back with waves of competing bacteria. Studies have confirmed that probiotics have helped other children as well. He functions very well, and that's a relative term. When I compare us to our baseline, I'm very happy with what he can do. Andrew is very self-sufficient. He can cook his own breakfast, pack his own lunch. Academically, he struggles beyond, you know, a third or fourth grade level. He still has some um, very impaired social skills. He is, though, a uh, delightful and a joy to be around the house. Andrew, pretty soon you have to go to your track meet. Hey. And what are you going to do at your track meet? Run fast. Run fast. Besides hopeful signs that altering gut bacteria may control autism, new research in Canada is looking at the possibility of medically replacing a whole internal ecosystem with a healthier one. This to me is like a, a, a golden opportunity to really look and see what might be going on in this situation where I can sort of see that there's some problems with the gut uh, and problems with development. Dr. McFabe and his colleague, Dr. Emma Allen Verko from the University of Guelph have begun a unique collaboration with the Somali community in Ontario. Joining forces with parents, they've started a study that will analyze fecal samples from Somali Canadian autistic kids. Dr. Alan Verko hopes it will reveal what's amiss with their bacterial profile. And also this, this entire change that the Somali population has when they come from Somalia to Canada to a completely different country, a different culture, different foods uh, in particular, and, uh, and hearing the changes that, that might be happening in the diet that might therefore have some kind of um, knock-on effect with the bacteria that live in the gut. The old adage, we are what we eat, I think that's very important. In Somalia, they eat a lot of fermented foods, and that's a very staple part of their diet. Uh, they wouldn't necessarily do that in, um, in Canada. It's the way we lived, you know, the food we used to eat. No corn, no soy, no genetically modified things, no nothing. 
everything is as natural as they can be. No pesticides, no hormones, nothing. And maybe they have a microbe that's missing now from their diet because they're not getting it from fermented food. And maybe that microbe might have some direct interaction with other microbes in their gut. Now, if that's a missing piece, it's that no longer there. Their gut microbiota might, might actually not be functioning correctly anymore. Dr. Alan Verko is working on the idea that the ecology of gut bacteria could be medically manipulated. Over here, we have the, uh, the robo-gut, which is uh, a, a very sort of uh, coined phrase for our uh, artificial gut system that we have here. Now, here we're able to actually um, uh, recapitulate the environment of the human gut, which enables us to culture some of the organisms just by growing them with their friends, essentially, as part of an ecosystem. Dr. Alan Verko approaches her work as an ecologist, using the robo-guts to create whole microbial communities, then manipulating them to see what happens to the stability of the ecosystem. It's an ecosystem that is incredibly diverse. In fact, probably one of the most diverse ecosystems on the face of this planet. And I liken it to, uh, to a rainforest. Everyone knows what happens when you start stripping species out of an uh, out of a ecosystem like a rainforest. You end up with a barren sort of landscape and uh, really the ecosystem just uh, kind of crashes. And this is what we think is the kind of the basis for many diseases now. The concept of treating gut microbes as an ecosystem leads to hope that someday a whole flawed set of microbes could be replaced. The idea would be that we would get rid of the, the bad ecosystem with antibiotics, with purging of some kind, and then replace it immediately with a healthy ecosystem that would allow that uh, to establish and to, to take on, on the, uh, the, the job of a, of a healthy ecosystem. So autism can be a shortage of some microbes and not a presence of some microbes. And that's difficult to investigate, but you have to do it. In Bergen, Norway, practical work in devising therapies for gut-related autism is becoming a science. And it can be seen in Tor Midvit's own family. Dr. Midvit's nephew, Lars Ursland, and his wife, Britt, have two sons. The younger one, Eric, is autistic. How old was he when you first made the diagnosis? He was six years old when he got the diagnosis. Okay. But uh, since he was two and a half or something like that, he, he started to slip away. We didn't feel that we really had contact with him. But that was after uh, he had uh, some stomach illness uh, when he was about two and a half. Today there is another visitor besides Dr. Midvit, Hannah Bjorg, a biochemist. Björg gave up a successful career in banking to study how to treat autism biomedically. Well, the history of why I'm working with autism at all is that I, I have three children that also have needed a lot of help. And we went uh, through 17 doctors uh, here to try and get help for the children. And uh, none of them uh, could help the children. So, Hanna, what do you think about this test? Björg traveled to America to find answers and was able to improve her children with what she learned. She decided to bring that knowledge home to Norway. Björk co-founded a clinic in Oslo, one of the first in Europe. Its mandate is to treat autism by treating the body. It's an idea that is still relatively new. The official statement uh, is that uh, in Norway is that uh, autism is not treatable. That's the official statement in Norway. It's something new for the medical uh, community, but probably not for the parents who's been uh, working with kids for a long time. With every new case at her clinic, Björg starts with a comprehensive examination of the child's history and routines. You always have a seven days period where the, where the parents tell what the children eat, how they behave, reports from the school, and um, how they sleep, uh, and uh, and, and with that as a base, we, uh, we go further and do some uh, medical examination of the child. 
One thing that we see is that uh, on the vitamin side, uh, it looks like some of his um, values has gone up uh, quite a bit. Mm. And it's mm. interesting to see if that has any relation to his uh, bacterial status mm. or not. Mm. In consultation with experts like Dr. Midvit, Bjorg runs tests investigating gut function. Then she makes careful alterations in diet while monitoring the child's bacterial flora and behavioral response. We normally start with the milk uh, and, um, and wean them off that and take away all the different products that have milk in it, which are a lot. And uh, then, you have to, then you do the same with gluten. We met Hanna and her colleagues in, in, in Oslo. And, and, and we realized that what we thought was uh, uh, without uh, gluten, without milk, without corn, really wasn't. So I have to make all the bakery myself. And I also, um, we also had also to, to divide the kitchen in as one gluten-free place and one with gluten. Gluten and casein-free diets are a common approach to healing a disturbed gut. But there's no scientific agreement on why it helps some kids. The best explanation is that a microbial imbalance impairs the body's handling of these foods and the brain is affected. Hannah's work with Eric has helped him improve socially and academically. But his parents would like even more improvement. It's very important that the parents fight for their children and that they are a team together with the doctor and the advisors because it's the parents who are closest to the child. So the parents can then tell the doctor how the child is developing. There was a carefully conducted clinical trial of a gluten-free, casein-free diet. And after the better part of a year, they had to close down the placebo arm because the kids on the diet were doing so well. To most people, the idea that someone could get over autism is completely inconceivable because they believe that autism is a lifelong a lifelong immutable condition wired into the brain that cannot be changed. And I've come to the conclusion that there really isn't evidence to prove that assumption. Now what's this? Five minutes. Yeah. Cool down. That's your cool down. Opposite of exhausted is. Uh, opposite of exhausted? Yes. Have energy. Have energy means? Mm, can keep going. What's this up here? Distance. Yeah, that's how many miles you're running, huh? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not, I don't think you ran 345 miles, honey. Okay. But it looks good. I cling to the hope that research is going to be done in time and that he'll be able to receive treatment and that he will be able to still respond due to plasticity of the brain. Who's to say? There could be a future where we screen for these weird fatty acids in children. We screen for these bacteria in children. And we help children by either eradicating the bacteria, having healthy bacteria to keep these, the bad bugs down, helping the person to metabolize these fatty acids, just like giving insulin to a diabetic to help them metabolize sugars. The model reflects a changing neurological disorder. Um, they really have a GI issue. And when you have a gut problem, nothing else is going to work. I would love to, to hear his voice. That's the most important thing. He understands more now. He understands everything you tell him, but he can't say the words. So that's one of the biggest for me, to see, you know, Alice speak and call me mom one day. As the
the evidence grows that disturbances in gut microbes at critical stages of development are linked with some kinds of autism, and with scientists studying the exact mechanisms of how these microbes affect the brain, there are signs that the condition is treatable and even preventable. Until fairly recently, we assumed that, uh, or we just didn't really give the gut microbiota any thought whatsoever. And we just thought of it, we knew that the bugs were there, but we thought that they were just benignly there because they, you know, they, they ate the waste products that, that we couldn't eat, and so why not? Um, the finding that they're actually there and they're important and they're, they're doing something that is contributing to health is, is a fairly new realization. We're really at the dawn of realizing that.